Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the funniest comics in the business when he's working. <laughs> well, Which will never happen again. It <laughs> never happen again. There isn't a club. Is there cl- any clubs open in the country? Uh, this is Larry yeah, Bubbles. This is Larry Texas Bubbles Brown. And, uh, Texas and Oklahoma. I know a friend of mine did a gig in Utah last week. Really? They were uh, 50, allowed 50% capacity. Hmm. Yeah. But so I, mean, I don't know if that's, yeah. if that's dangerous or not. We'll now, find out. I think I maybe asked you this last time, but uh, do you uh, like um, uh, practice in front of the mirror? I used to when I was younger, but I don't anymore. I should, though, because I tried to do a – I did a set a couple of weeks ago, outdoor show, and uh, I was having trouble remembering 20 minutes. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You, it, most comedians have a first line they always use in their act. The reason being that whatever you say initially when you step on stage tells the audience who you are. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you you drag them into your world. So what do you, you what is your go-to thing to do that? To tell well, the what audience? I've had for years is uh uh Things are going great. Someone stole my identity. Now his life sucks. That's enough. That says. But that's uh, that's I do that because it just kind of, uh, I think in one sentence you pretty much describe your character. (laughs) Well, that things aren't going. Things aren't going well for this guy. Right. Right. And and now they all know who Larry Bubbles Brown is. Yeah. Because you're really a series of one-liners, aren't you? I mean, pretty much. You, yeah, you're not a. Uh, I went to the airport yesterday, and I was walking down the. You know, you, you're not that kind of comic. No, but the one-liners to me are a little. To me, they're a little corny too, but they seem to work. So. Yeah. So at least no, you, at least no one does them better than Dangerfield. So. At least you know how your act's going to start. You know, yeah, you haven't I, lost I that. Finish it, huh? Someone told me Dangerfield, because he would do, the trouble with one-liners, you can do five or six a minute, and he would, for him to do a full show, was, he would do 250 to 300 jokes. So I asked this guy that worked with him, he said, I said, how did you remember those? And he said, he, oh, he worried all day. He'd listen to a reporter for hours just listening to his uh, Really? Material. Really? Yeah. Because, you know, you, you everybody figures a comedian comes out, that's got to be the easiest job in the world. You just go on stage and tell some jokes. But you got to remember the jokes. That's to start them, with, yeah. you know. Um, I, even even See, if you're a comic, that you do like if you got the long stories, uh, then you those you got the stories memorized. So you, once you start that, it's much easier than just doing the one liners and figure well, you, out where they come next. Well, you remember Richard Lewis? I mean, if there was a piano on stage, he he put it there. But otherwise, he put it on the stool. He had mm-hmm. his all his notes there, and then he would look at them. He he was unabashed when it came to that you know yeah yeah so i mean amazing uh how how people work uh, slayton uh i i'm trying to remember if, if slayton goes through his notes before he goes on that i do I know i think he does and occasionally when he had new material he would definitely take his notes on stage yeah yeah um but uh, now, how does new material come? Does it sometimes just come on stage? You're doing something, and all of a sudden you make up a line to try and be funny. Uh, mine usually come. I'll be watching TV and hear something, and I'll I'll have a reaction to it. That's how I get my. Uh... Mm-hmm. Do you write it down? Yeah, because a couple of times I've I did write things down. Then I remembered I had a joke, but I couldn't remember it. So... Because I know comedians would go around with a notepad all the time. 
And they then do, some, and now they have, uh, most of them use little handheld recorders. Yeah, but part of the reason, I think, is that if you don't write it down, you'll forget it. And then the next day mm-hmm. you're going, yeah, I came up with a great joke yesterday, but I can't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's in a, a Seinfeld episode that happens. To, he wakes up and <laughs> he writes something down and can't read his writing the next morning. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he, 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 that's that's the way it uh, works, you know. It's how comedians uh, do what they do, and it's it's not easy. It's not simple. No, and I think there's uh, like great, great actors like Brando apparently had a hor- horrible time remembering lines. Oh, they no, he he literally had them write his lines on cards that were on various parts of the set. That's why I would look up the sky, up up in the air, and you kind of go, eh, I don't know what that. Yeah, well, there's, and, there's a picture of Robert Duvall, and he's got all of uh, uh, Brando's lines taped on his coat. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, it's a great picture. Yeah, he's got all the Godfather lines in this one scene. They're all over his coat, and so Brando's just looking at him, reading. <laughs> You know, you're you're an actor like uh, Robert Duvall, who I think we have to say is one of the greater actors, okay? Yeah, definitely. And to suddenly realize that you're nothing more than a teleprompter for Marlon Brando. <laughs> it's got to just be nuts. <laughs> you know, I... Um, um, uh, what was that? There was something. I see. There was something I was going to say, and then I forgot it. And if I had written it down, I would have been able to say it. I never work with notes. Never. People say, "Do you have notes?" No, that's for why him? you did. Uh, like you did all those interviews, and it was just kind of a flowing conversation, which is uh, I could never do something like that. I would have. I would have to write questions down. Well, that's why you, uh, you know, the, the, my. What people always say, well, what what is your key to interviewing? Because I think I am one of the best. If I take claim to anything, I don't know if I can still do it because I don't interview enough people. I'm interviewing you now. Uh, but um, the fact of the matter is, is that they, they ask me, you know, how do you do a good interview? And I said, you don't do an interview. You hold a conversation. Right. And all, all you have to be is inquisitive about the person you're talking to. And I said, and the worst thing you can do is while he's answering you is trying to think of what your next question is going to be. If you simply listen to him and li- or her, listen to their answer, the next question will be apparent. It'll just come because it's the flowing of conversation. It's what you would do sitting over a table somewhere. Uh, and so I never, I, never, I, I never prepared for an interview. I never went and did research on the person. You know, I let myself discover them for the audience. My other uh, theory was, if I know a lot about this guy, I'm 10 steps ahead of the audience, and I'm losing the audience. I'm not being the audience asking the questions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Uh, and so I don't study. Now, one time, that turned out to be a bad thing for me, because there was one time I did not know enough about the person I was interviewing, and I should have, and it was Robert Wise, the director. You know, you remember the director, Robert Wise. I was down there that morning, yeah. Yeah. What didn't I ask him about? What was it? Uh, the, I, uh, I asked him, he did Star Trek the movie, he did West Side Story. Uh, I had a whole bunch of questions about those. What didn't I ask him about? His, the, the movie from 51. Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. I forgot to ask him what it was like working on Citizen Kane. Oh, I I didn't know he worked on Kane. He was the editor on Citizen Kane. Holy Christ. Yeah, and I failed. That would have been the whole interview if I had just remembered that. Oh, my God. Well, because I was holding my little... I'd love to have known what he said on that. Yeah, my little conversation about something. After he left, somebody said... Didn't ask him about Citizen Kane. Gee. But I remember it was still a good interview, but man, I would love to have heard that. Yeah, it was still a good interview, but it would have been a better interview if I'd been able to ask him about that because, I mean, what's the most watershed movie of all time? I mean, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I went to see this, this film, Citizen Kane. Uh, it was 
and re-release at a movie theater with a girlfriend I had in Sacramento. I remember this. And I saw the movie, and I walked out, and I went, now I understand what movies are. I understand that movies can be more than just, you know, laughing at the Three Stooges or whatever, <laughs> you know? And that it, as a movie, it influenced me into loving film. Um, and and here, here's Robert Wise. I could ask him about my favorite picture of all time, and he goes... He, he, uh, no, I didn't even ask him about that. I asked him more about the Star Trek movie. God, which he was, was the editor on that. He, yeah, he was, I think he was the editor, yeah. I don't think he was assistant director. He was the editor. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, he worked with the worked on Citizen Kane with Orson Welles. Big, wow. Wow. Or as Christopher Walken would say, wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's one thing I learned from Kevin Pollack once said, if you want to do an impression of um, Christopher Walken, all you have to do is take any one-syllable word and chop it up into two syllables. <laughs> wow. No, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, um, well, Citizen Kane, is, it just, uh, it's amazing, and it just it still looks good today, and it's 80 years old. He, he made that film in secret. Uh, he somehow convinced RKO that it wasn't what it was. And they made it, and they used existing sets, and they did it very cheaply, and he kept off the radar at RKO. And then the thing came out, and they went nuts, you know, because Hearst went crazy. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't advertise the film in any of his... Any, any of his uh, what do you call it? In any of his uh, newspapers. Papers and and, and uh, years later, Orson Welles said he felt that was unfair of of Hearst because the movie wasn't really about Hearst. Uh, part of the character may have been based on Hearst, but it's not supposed to be Hearst. The, the his girlfriend, the opera singer, was based on a guy who built a uh, an opera house in Chicago for his girlfriend. Okay. And he said the thing he felt worst about was the insinuation that Marion Davies had no talent because of this film in which the girlfriend of Kane has no talent. Mm -hmm. He said she was one of the most talented women in movies, and she was. She was terrific. She was incredible. If she was held back, she was held back by Hearst, who didn't want her to do comedies. Um and she was doing movies for his cosmopolitan pictures. Uh, but the one thing nobody knows uh, realizes about her, she was very wealthy. She had made a lot of money. She owned Columbus Circle in New York City. Literally. Really? Yeah. Wow. When he went broke because of the Depression and his whole newspaper empire was going to collapse, guess who shelled out the money to save it? I didn't know that. Yeah. She wasn't a bimbo, you know. She wasn't a hanger on. She truly loved the guy, you know. And um, uh, he well said, "I that what I feel most guilty about was the insinuation that that was supposed to be Marion Davies, because it wasn't, you know." And I, I so I, you know, whatever. Anyway, we have a couple more minutes here, and that's good because I'm getting very lightheaded. Yeah, I don't know. I just said something, something, maybe I, maybe it's cancer again. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Please were not, please were not like our friend who's being evicted for no reason in Nevada. Yes, right. We have a friend being evicted. It's uh, Stephen Pearl. Well, it sounds like a Kafka story. Like, they, they won't let him in or out, but they won't tell him why. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I he I was supposed to do an interview with him yesterday, and then his cat had to go to the doctor, and then he wrote me and told me this whole thing about how he couldn't do it because he's got this and that, and he'll let me know when, and he can't get into his house, but he can't leave it, something like that. I think if he leaves, he can't get back in. If he leaves, he can't yeah. get back in. He's got a robotic gate, and his name's been taken off the list or something, you know. Well, it, we we have to go out there and feed him. Oh, I just lost Larry Bubbles Brown. What do you know? I'll call him right back here. 
We'll let this go a couple of more minutes than it was. Okay. I don't know what happened to you. You just boop. You Either know. we have to go and I'll let it without. Yeah, but we were running out of time anyway. Okay. You know, but anyway, I, 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 so if people don't hear Pearl on the show for a bit, it's because he doesn't know where he's living or something. I don't know what the story is completely. I'll have to call him and find Y'all out. Y'all have to call him, too, and see if he's all right. But he's had, like, the... The cat's sick. He's had a heart surgery. <laughs> yes, he had heart surgery, and uh, he uh, he had his had the two thousand dollar bill to get his car fixed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, other than other than that, uh, everything's fine for him. <laughs> and there's no place to work. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> Things are great. Hey, two uh, another week. We'll talk to you next week, right, Bob? You Bubs? got it. Okay, okay Larry like- Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, playing absolutely nowhere. nowhere. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And, of course, that was uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me turn on my fan here so that I'm feeling a certain coolness and whatever. Hello, how are you? Good evening. Uh, Welcome to our fine little program. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to Bubbles next week. We... We check in with these people once a week, usually, uh, to see how they're doing and so on. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, I'm t- again, I'm tired tonight. I don't know what it is. I think, I think what it is, I am so bored with being stuck inside the house that it's kind of a, a fatigue you get, you know? I mean, there's the, the thing with the ears, which is causing me to wobble and do things like that, but the tiredness... I think has to do with uh, the COVID. It has to do with, uh, you know, not going out, not going anywhere. And even if I want to go out, there's no place to go. Uh, I, you know, I, it's, uh, it's, it, it's really, I, and you know, I, what, what am I talking about? You people are going through the same thing. Well, wait a minute. Let me check in with my, uh, let me check in with my uh, 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 Zoom panel here who will be, Uh, Getting together here. Here comes Charlie. And uh, let me see here. I got to go to the gallery view. And there they are. Wait a minute. Brian Neary isn't there. He's apparently he signed in, but (laughs) he's not there. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Alex. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you get to the point where you get to feel tired? Because yeah. it's just, it's just, there's this thing about being indoors so much. It's just, look at my skin. Look how pale I am. <laughs> look yep. how pale you are. Yeah. And you're not supposed to be. No, not after being out in the sun all summer. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, where, where, where's Brian? He's just, he's just not there. I, I, wow. I, yeah, well, you know, whatever. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, how are you doing? And again, I always ask him every day, what's happening in Texas with the COVID? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, we, we're almost, we're only about 20,000 below California, like 850,000 infections yeah. and COVID yeah. infections. So. Yeah. We're going to pass California in the next week or so. Yeah. Oh, well, good. We're number one. <laughs> we'll be number one. Will you be number one? Yeah. 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 Well, we've had a slight spike here in New York, but it's not. They they say, oh, there's a spike going on in New York, but compared to everywhere else, this is a minor blip. You know, we have slightly more. Our our infections are up a little bit, and our um, uh, amount of people being admitted to hospitals is up a tad. But it's not like you know Wisconsin, where they can't find yeah, beds. Yeah, Wisconsin set a record. They can't <laughs> find beds for people. You know. Yeah. They kind they kind of in the situation we were in back in the day, but then yeah. again, we were in that condition back in the day because it was the very beginning of the whole thing, and we didn't know how to handle it. You know, we weren't ready for it. Yeah. We didn't have the you know the what do they call it the PP what is it the PP personal something PPEs PPEs we didn't have the PPEs so uh, you know. Um, uh, we didn't. We didn't have enough hospital beds. I mean, we we took. Uh, we literally 
got a giant uh, place that we have here where uh, the uh, Javits Center, which is, you know, they have like car shows there and things like that. We retrofitted it with uh, beds. Yeah. And uh, the military uh, putting the place together. Luckily, we got to the point where we didn't need to use it, but at least we're ready. And then Trump sent up the ship, which we should yeah. have never done because he'll never let us forget that he sent the ship, <laughs> you know. Um, so, um, uh, you know, it, it's just, I, I, I feel malaise and tired now of course i bet josh doesn't feel tired like we do because you go to work every he's, day he's right? been working, yeah. you go to work every day at least you get out of the house well i mean you know i i work 12 hours a day from five o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening so I, I i i guess i qualify as tired maybe it's just a different kind is it a 12 hour day legal where you live it's fucking required. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm in fucking management. You fucking do whatever you got to do. Yeah, they don't. Um, they call you at home and uh, need something. You go in the room and get the computer that you bring home and take care of that. Well, you know something? A lot of people, uh, I think, are finding they're having to work from home now, okay, uh, where uh, they didn't have to before. And what they're finding out, I think, is how little work they actually do when they're at work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In other words, Marjorie comes in here in the morning and does everything she has to do to maintain the job and what she's supposed to do and her duties. But it doesn't take her eight hours. So most of the time, people at work are sitting there drinking coffee, talking to a co-worker, then they go over to the computer, they type a few things in. Does that make sense? That they're now compressing all their work into one kind of workload and doing it, and you know, that's it. Nobody's nobody's looking over their shoulder. Some jobs, maybe I don't know. Not much. Yeah. What's Wish that? I what meetings? Like that. Those are your meetings. Meeting, meetings and meetings and meetings. Really? Yeah, and there's one meeting at one o'clock on Monday. That says Alex Bennett pop up, and I say out of office, so they don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're that loyal about it, you know. Yeah. My boss can't see what the meeting is, so. Yeah. But, yeah, I, but yeah, I, I, I agree, but <clears throat> there are a lot of meetings, especially for the projects that we're on because we're trying to get these factories up pretty quick while we have this window of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's okay. We're, we're, we're um, surviving here. Um, but it's it's just that, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I, I'm just, I, today I was going, I'm just tired. I can't even, I was lying in bed and I said, I'm going to get out now and make, make dinner. And I had to you know, push myself to get out of bed and, you know, whatever. I mean, my, my body is getting very used to doing its blood circulation in a prone condition, you know? I mean, it's just, it just, and then I, and then I decided, oh, I go work out on the Peloton, right? The, 15 minutes yesterday, big deal. But at least it was 15 minutes. Sometimes I do 25. What? Yeah. That's better than nothing. Well, I only did, I did usually do 25, but I only did 15 yesterday because it turns out it was a warm day, and the Peloton is right near a window, and the, the sun was coming through, and it wasn't making it that much fun, right? So, but I, but I did it. You know, but uh, then I went and fell asleep for a half hour. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm glad I do that thing on uh, on uh, 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 Mondays at 4 o'clock because at least it means I have to somehow wake up, you know, and do something. Um, but um, hello, Brian Ludwig. Now we have two Brians. Yeah, Hello. Hello. Looking very much again tonight like Che Guevara. That's very good. Let's see. And your, uh, what, what is that shmata on your head? That's a Jewish expression. No, no. What, what Just, is uh, It's the same. It's, 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 it's a, a, what do they call them? Like a do face mask that I use as a, used to keep the hair out of my eyes as well. Oh, oh, really? Did I they, have two of them. And do you use it, you use it as a face mask too? Oh yeah. Well, I I use the lower. I connect to both of them when I go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Marjorie went out today. Here, here, I don't know if any of you have had this dream recently, but I've had a continual dream that keeps coming up. And it's, I go out and I suddenly realize I didn't bring my mask with me. And what am I going to do? I'm out on the street and I don't have a mask. Okay? Uh, but I, I, that never happens to me. I think the one time, I always make sure I have a, a mask crumpled up in my back pocket and my pants, which, you know, lasts me a week because I don't go out that much. So that if I forget it, at least I've got one, but I never forget it. I think maybe once I forgot it as I was leaving, and then I turned around, walked in, grabbed it, and left. Marjorie uh, today got half, it got about three blocks when she suddenly realized she wasn't wearing a mask. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what did she do? She went to the, uh, there's a test site in our neighborhood. So she went to the test site and said, I don't have a mask. Can you give me one? And they here, sure. Here's one for you, right? But she was out there, uh, uh, kind of naked. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Because you want to wear those damn things. Um, yeah, a couple, a couple although, times I walked out of the office, the same thing. All of a sudden, when you realize it, you feel like embarrassed, like you're walking around with your fly down or something. Yeah, but I also yeah. hate hate going out because I don't like walking and wearing the mask. I mean, it, I get short of breath and everything because the mask, you don't have any real breathing, you know. <laughs> you're recirculating your own breath in, in inside that mask. And so... Uh, you know, I really, I, if I didn't have to, I mean, I hate wearing the mask, but you got to, you know, it's, uh, you got to for, for you and for the people around you. So, but there is that dream that people have about going out and not wearing the mask. Um, I always used to talk about, uh, d do any of you have recurring dreams based on what you do? What, what is that? Every time I, have no I start talking, I you hear it? Yeah. It's feedback or something. Yeah. Anyway, um, hear that? Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, because of the job you do, you have a recurring nightmare about the job. And mine always was, what is that? Let me see here. I turn that off. Now it turns back on. Do we have it now? No, that got rid of it. Okay. Anyway, uh, I have this re had this recurring what I called the radio dream, and I asked a lot of other radio people. There it is again. Let me try muting, see if it's from my end, because yeah. i got to blow my nose anyway. But. Yeah, okay. Uh, is it there? Is it him? Eh? Hello? Anyway, uh, yeah, it must be you for some reason. Uh, but anyway, I, I had this this recurring dream that I'm doing a radio show and I go I go out of the control room to go to the bathroom and I come back and the door is locked and the record is coming to an end. Okay? It's a recurring disc jockey dream. And I've asked a lot of other people in the radio business, have you had that dream? And they go, all the time. Really? All the time. Yeah. That's our greatest fear. We'll never make it back for the end of the record. <laughs> so, but I never had it happen to me in real life. But in the dream, it does. And now I have the the COVID dream where I go out and I forgot the mask, you know. So, so what's new with uh, with all of you? How about you, Brian? I think you can talk, and it's not a problem. Which Brian. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We're fine now. Okay. Anyway, Brian Ludwig. Yeah. What's new with you? Not a whole hell of a lot. Just uh, more of the same. Yeah. Uh, wondering kind of on uh, pens and needles, wondering if, uh, I don't know, uh, the schools are going to be shut down again. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are. They've gone with the uh, remote learning only option. I'm one of the few districts that have employed a hybrid method that's soon to go fuller time for uh, people, for students below uh, high school. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, we, we're, it, it, the whole uncertainty of it is just anxiety inducing. It's anxi anxiety inducing. Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, all right. They're saying they're saying maybe through December with the kids here, <clears throat> but they never start. They never did a hybrid here. They did strictly they shut everything down March thirteenth, and then they they did virtual learning. From the See, that's what I think they should have done. They should one or the other, either five days a week or online only. None of this pussy foot uh, half in the water, half in the half on land bullshit. Yeah. So what, what was the hybrid? They they came so many days a week or rotated yeah. or they rotate uh, two days a week for uh, certain students whose basically last names begin with A oh. to like L. and then Wednesdays are off. Everybody gets off, but we still get paid doing what I do, thankfully, because people would quit mm -hmm. like flies and drop like flies if they didn't get paid. Nevertheless, uh, and then students Thursday and Friday. With uh, lay, with letters ending in or beginning with P to Z, and they, mm -hmm. they do Thursday and Friday. But uh, that's all 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 across <clears> the board, <throat> uh, kindergarten through grade twelve. Uh, the board just voted on allowing uh, starting the new semester, which is the first week of November, um, for all kids below high school, below ninth grade. What state are you I, in? What state? Yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania. 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 Okay. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, um, I don't know what the answer is here. I, if I were a parent, I would be very cautious about sending my kid to school. Yeah. You know? Somehow that disease is, that virus is magically going to not affect, uh, you know, K through eight students, and they're not going to bring it to their grandparents or their guardians or their parents. Or their, or their parents, and they're not going to pass it on to you know older people and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's but, well, that's the that's it's the myth. That's the current myth. Incoherent. So you know, I ask, I ask on Facebook, I ask along, and I'll ask on this on this board here. And I, I'm not an anti-masker, but at the same time, I despise our, I despise Harrisburg. I despise Harrisburg leadership. I despise the governor, Tom Wolf. But I also hate the uh, legislature, which is mostly comprised of Republicans who are, you know, COVID idiots, as they call them. But, you know, I just, you know, one day, one day, Brian, one day when you're not looking, Brian, we're going to find something you like. Well, <laughs> you're going to need a microscope. <laughs> you would know more than I would, uh, uh, Bennett, that uh, as I age, the things I like diminish greatly. Oh, yeah. I, be, I become more critical and also less. Um, uh, less accepting of things. I was going to say the la that also applies to my level of trust in people. It diminishes and shrinks. Yeah, but how smaller. old are you, Brian? I'm 38. Oh, I will be boy. 39 in hey, February. Hey, we save that for over 50, will you? Have some fun now. Well, I'm Pace sorry. Uh, when you were, th when, I, I'll say to you, uh, Alex, what I say to my parents: When you were in your 30s, when you were in your 20s, how are you handling the pandemic? All right, that's right. You didn't have a pandemic. We're all, <laughs> now. We're yeah. all fucked in the ass and in every other orifice you can I'm think of. I'm trying to think. Did we ever have anything close to that? No, we didn't have any. Well, you know, if you were gay, I suppose there was AIDS. You yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. um, Unless you were alive in like 1918, you you, you didn't yeah. have anything except for the Kansas City uh, flu. I, I mean the Spanish flu. Oh, no, I mean the Kansas City flu. Well, wasn't there was, – there was a woman in New York known as Typhoid Mary. Yep. Who spread typhoid in New York. Yeah. She didn't get sick herself. She just gave it to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. She was asymptomatic. Yes, yes, know? yes. What? Oh. Did she know? Did she know that she was a carrier? Uh, apparently. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, she was quarantined her whole life. Uh, Alex, you were you were you were in New York. I'm sorry, you were in San Francisco when the AIDS epidemic was there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but at the beginning, at the beginning, before they, you know, before they found out more about it, I mean, it was everybody was scared, right? I mean, yeah. Boy, my tooth is bothering me all of a sudden. <sighs> a little sharp thing, whatever. I don't know. There's always something wrong with me. Okay. Any, anyway, um, the, yeah, the AIDS thing was happening here, I mean, the, here the, in, in San Francisco. And, yeah, and But at the beginning, everybody was scared, right? Because they didn't really know what was going on also, right? N well, yeah, no, there, been scared. Uh, there, were, there were several yeah. problems, what, what, what was going on. Uh, first problem was is that the reason it was spreading in San Francisco especially 
was mm. because of the gay newspapers. Uh, let me explain that one to you. There was a guy by the name of Marvin, Mervyn Silverman, who was the, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, what do they call the head doctor in the city? The, uh, um, and Surgeon General? Surgeon General, a surgeon, okay. whatever, you know, he was the yeah. director of public health or whatever. And he came up with this thing and this AIDS thing started happening and he went out there and said, there's this thing called AIDS and I think the place it's starting is in the gay bathhouses. And so uh, all of a sudden, the gay newspapers came out after Silverman and tried to get him fired and tried to get him taken care of because who are their major advertisers? Mm -hmm. The bathhouses, the gay bathhouses. So they started going, oh, there's no problem with that, and they kept advertising it. And they, they then tried to get Mervyn Silverman fired, calling him homophobic and gay and whatever. And Silverman was absolutely right. Absolutely right. And so it was really the gay newspapers in San Francisco that hastened the whole thing. I mean, not that there wasn't a problem, but, you know, if they had just said, okay, look, you know, because some guy would come out of the bathhouse and go, you know, I, I go there every week. I, I, I fucked 20, 200 guys in there last year. Well, if you don't think something's going to come out of that Petri dish, you're sadly mistaken, you know. And they wanted to deny it because this was their place of social uh, gathering. Uh, and and they should have done was they should have gotten ahead of it yeah. because it was not the gay bathhouse itself that was spreading the disease it was the lack of protective sex that was occurring in the right. promiscuity oh yeah oh, oh absolutely right. that was yeah spreading. yeah yeah but they could have they, they did a major pr bumble but there. you know i mean hell if i were gay i wouldn't think i needed a condom either i wasn't going to get anybody pregnant okay you know uh but yes yeah, if everybody had used condoms uh, uh much like if everybody wore a mask yeah so and, and wasn't and I hope I'm not speaking bad or speaking something that you didn't say, but were you saying before when you're on Live One Five that one of the problems also were a lot of the a lot of gay guys who were lying to their wives and then would take that home? Well, that, yeah, that's that, how women would get it. Yeah. That was another problem too. I mean, the guys yeah, who I remember were, you saying that on Live One Five before. But well, like, they were denying the fact they were gay. Uh, I yeah. I think the the idea of people getting closeted. Mm -hmm. Help spread the disease greatly too, right. because people weren't ready to say, "Hey, you know, I'm gay. Uh, I better uh, take precautions and so on." I often f felt that that disease was one of the most horrible diseases ever, even worse than what we've got now. Because the very thing you do when you love somebody is the very thing that could kill you. Right. And I thought that was a cruel mistake of nature. To pull that one. Let me say hello to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Kevin's out cruising. Yeah, he's out cruising. Cruisings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, we just lost his Cruising picture. Salinas or Yeah, somewhere like that. Uh but anyway, so th that was a that was a I, I found that just a scary, scary time in San Francisco, you know. And uh, be, being heterosexual, um I I didn't feel as threatened by it because the problem was there was a myth being promulgated at the time by the by by the gay leaders that oh well if you're straight you can get it too well yeah you could get it but the fact was the straight population wasn't getting it right. because the method of transmission was different uh, and uh, how is it different well let's put it this way you don't exactly put it in a vagina. Okay, and it's the exchange of blood products that caused AIDS. And so if you were doing anal sex, you could break blood vessels and your sperm could combine with this blood vessels uh, uh, being kind of disrupted. And that's how it was transmitted. And heteros never do anal sex. Well, heteros do do anal sex, but I'm saying that doing normal heterosexual sex you probably you wouldn't get it, you know. Um, Plus, I think I think the videos or the pictures of the people going through that were heart wrenching. I mean, to see people oh, lose just, so much uh, weight. And well, I'll tell terrible. you what happened. I used to have comedians come in, and when this first started, every all the comedians would come in and make uh, make uh, AIDS jokes. 
you know. And uh, I just, one day, I was watching TV, and I saw a guy with AIDS on TV, and it was horrible. It was just terrible, yeah. you know, what ha was happening to him and how literally he was, his autoimmune system shut down, and he was getting things only cats get, you know, things like that. And I saw this, and I came in the next day, and then to every comedian who came in, I said, new rule, no AIDS jokes. Yeah. And they said, Why? And I said, because it's not funny. Have you ever seen anybody with yeah. AIDS? And I said, the only reason you find it funny is because it's about gays. You know, you find gays funny. And so in a way, it's a homophobic thing, too. So I said, just no more, not on my show. You want to go do gay jokes, go do them on the, uh, the other station. There was another way that heteros could get it is through blood transfusions. Well, I had a friend, Warren Thomas, comedian, and he, um, uh, he had a uh, phlebitis, which is uh, something that happens with the legs and blood vessels and so on. And he had to go to St. Francis Hospital and get blood, trans San Francisco Hospital, and get blood transfusions. Yep. And Our then, friend. yes, and then about a half a year later, he comes down with AIDS. Now, he wasn't. Did his legs get real big? Because I had a coworker once who had phlebitis. I, I don't. I, I, I don't huge. remember. I, I really don't remember. He never showed me his legs. He had problems walking. But the thing was, he came down with AIDS. And um, 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 when you're not talking, Brian, I guess you better turn off your mic because it is feeding back. Yeah. 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 Um, and anyway, so what happened uh, was that uh, he, you know he just he 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 came down with AIDS. Wait a minute, there, it's coming from somewhere else, not Brian. Uh, I don't know what this is tonight. Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, well, we know it's not me, so. It's not you. Anyway, um, so, I mean, he, you know, he, he battled it for the longest time, and, and he was down to, like, one T cell, which, you know, that's wow. it, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. And then all of a sudden, they started coming out with these cocktails, and he started taking that. He went from one T cell to 10 T cells to 20 T cells. Finally got his T cell count up again and survived it. And those cocktails are what are keeping people alive today who get AIDS. You get AIDS today, it's no biggie. You just take the cocktails and that's it, you know? Um, they call it prep. Yeah, they've never, they've never cured it's it. It's a pill now. No. Yeah, right. they've never cured it, but right. they have mitigated it. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like handling diabetes. It's not, yes, you know, it's exactly. Less lethal than yeah. having diabetes now, but prep. So. And, and years later, he died of something. They found him dead in his apartment here in New York City. And we don't know. I never got a straight answer what he died from, but I think it may have been complications from AIDS. You know? I remember but, Warren Thomas. He was, he was very good. He was one of the great comic. Just a great comic. And a lovely guy. Everybody loved Warren. Uh, but... Um, you know, and the, there was only one gauge. There was only one age joke that I ever thought was funny and permissible. And I think I've told it here, but I'll tell it again because I found it very funny at the time. What's the worst thing about getting AIDS? Having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> you're Haitian. <laughs> I'm Haitian, Mom. Yeah. It's like my, <laughs> but that my was grandmother it. had a had a gay joke once. You want to hear it? Your, gra your grandmother had a gay uh, goes, joke? Uh, how can you tell? You? Yeah, this was years ago. I, she didn't know I was gay, or no, I didn't. I never came out to her. But did you know um, you were gay at the she time? She went like this. Uh, oh, I've known. I had suspicion since I was a senior in high school, but. Okay. Well, I didn't really know for sure until 2007 when I was 25. Yeah. But the joke goes like this. How can you tell that you've been in a gay pit? In a gay what? How can you tell that you have been at a gay picnic? Oh, a gay what? picnic. I don't know. How do you know mm -hmm. if you've been at a gay picnic? Yes, All the hot dogs taste like shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can... Yeah. Tell that joke because they do suck thick on the pet. All, all right, all right. Let's, uh, not so down low. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into de de demonetization. Area. And I'm eating apples with Nutella right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My condolences to you, then. 
Uh, we like lost my last one. At least they're not grapes. We lost Kevin. We lost Kevin. Uh, but we'll probably get him back. Um, let me ask you, um, we, you know, we were talking about the debate. Uh, when was it? Was it last night? Uh, and, and, and what people thought of it. And I felt, and a tribute to Bree here, that when the ratings came out today, uh, Trump would have gotten the highest ratings because they were on opposite each other, Biden and Trump. And that Trump would get the highest ratings because, let's face it, people love watching train wrecks. And uh, there it goes again, that damn sound. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 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 and um, today the ratings came out. Sad news for Trump. He lost the ratings race. I thought it was by three million. Uh, about a million, I think, something like that. Yeah. Biden oh, my 12. God. What, 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 Bree? Find the shop objects in the White House. <laughs> Bree? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's according, according to the old, old traditional ways, which are long since gone. What do you mean? The, but, what, yeah. what do you mean? What, what traditional ways? <laughs> nobody, nobody I know watches TV anymore. Yeah. They only watch uh, on their tablets. Well, between the two, of, YouTube, between the so two of them, they had about 22 million people watching. So what's, is that nobody watching? No, it's some people, but I'm sure more were watching through other means that are not recorded. Oh, no, they were all, all these things were counted, all these various uh, outlets and so on. And yeah, today you could all go watch a, a segment of it here and there, like on YouTube. Man, but again, Brian, it, cut your audio and let's just see if it's you. I don't know where this is coming from today, but it's it's driving me. No? Oh, it's still going. Me too. Huh? Let me see here. I can have an idea. Everybody mute. Everybody mute at the same time. Let me see here. Okay, it's gone. Now, uh, Bree, turn yours on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're fine. Bree, uh, let's see here. Brian Ludwig, turn yours on. Okay, it's on. Help, uh, it's fine. Now, let's go to Brian uh, uh, Neary. Brian? Turn it on. Uh, hello? Yeah. No, it's not there. Okay. Echo, echo. Yeah. No, there's no echo coming back uh, to me here. And now go to Charlie Wallace. Charlie, turn yours on. There. And is it come happening? No. And finally, Josh, you turn it on. Okay. No. It's gone, Tony. And, 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 Tony. and Tony, turn yours on. It's, it, it's not happening now. Mm -hmm. So apparently somebody turning on and off stopped it. I don't know what. For anyway. now, we'll see what happens in the next few minutes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Technical Problems. Uh, yeah, I was I was hoping it's not yours because if it's yours, you're going to be up all night trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> you know, I've got yeah, really. I've got that was the early days of MS Teams for me. I I've tried to get myself to the point where when I get some kind of technical problem, I just don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. That's you gonna know, work <laughs> because uh, otherwise I'll I, I won't. The rest of my life will be a living hell. Anyway, but, they had the ratings for this thing, and they the, the and, and and by the way, NBC, who Trump was on, was also on three two other channels. No, by the way, it's back again. Who knows what what it is? I have no idea. Anyway, but as far as there, I know, there are settings on Zoom where you can you can tell Zoom you know, uh, fix my audio so that things in the background you don't hear. Maybe somebody no, has no, that no, on. That, no, that's, that's, that's uh, uh, doing away with background noise in a room. Yeah. That's not what this is. But anyway, whatever it is, it's not happening right now. Anyway, um, uh, Trump was on three channels last night instead of just one. Biden was only on one mm. and he beat him. Didn't okay. know that. Oh, yeah. wow, that's, that's interesting. But this whole yeah. thing is unprecedented, as far as I know. That Josh can correct me. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. Josh can, but I don't recall there being uh, 
uh, election year in which there was no town halls. There was no second debate in which, in which there wasn't two pre two presidents, a candidate, and and a, and a president or two, you know, a battle royale situation. Uh, this is the first time that uh, they they've declined this. That the, that the format has changed as far as well. I it changed because of of COVID. And the fact the president came down with it, and they didn't want to hold a second one while he was still infectious, okay? Mm -hmm. So they came up with this thing about uh, Biden said, well, I'll do a town hall over at ABC. And so Trump said, I'll do a town hall over at NBC. And rather than NBC saying, well, you do yours on Wednesday, and Biden will do his on Thursday. Well, they could have done it, they could have done it like Zoom here. They could have had a, you know. They could have had something like uh, that. Biden's but, went uh, two hours, didn't it? No, hour, 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 hour and a half. An hour and a half. Uh, but it, the fact was that um, uh, it, uh, it, you know, that that what this does is I can't imagine how this is disheartened. OK, how this is disheartened Trump, because Trump always goes, oh, I, you know, I had my inauguration. They were the highest rated inaugurations of all time. Or I did this and it was the highest rated this or that. And he can't claim that now. Yes. Oh, he'll claim it. He'll say he'll say the YouTube numbers. But he doesn't like know it. There are no YouTube numbers. That's just well, that's Bree what is on to something. Yeah. Is on to something. They they don't people don't why why watch the thing on YouTube? I watched it on the MSNBC, you know, pipe through YouTube. So, you know, this is how like, Nielsen ratings, I don't think they don't they don't incorporate that into their uh into their uh rating system so They're, you know they actually they i think they do now to a certain extent really yeah okay. i think so i think so not completely i mean these were the network numbers uh but nevertheless i mean i wouldn't have thought that biden would have beaten out trump okay no. plain and simple why would he he's not he, he's not the train wreck that trump is and you watch trump for the train wreck by the way, I, well, that that barely person you can barely see is Kevin. And he, that it, it kind of looks like looks like David yeah. Letterman driving a car. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Looks like what, what, what orientation do I have there? There you go. There, you go. there yeah. you go. Oh, is that the way it works now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just driving home from uh, Burlingame, so I thought I'd jump on and see if I can keep myself awake on the way home. Don't well, lie on the way home if you're tired. Well, I'm in San Jose now. So. Yeah, well, okay. I'm in San Jose. You're traveling is unbelievable. I don't understand that. Yeah. Man. But I don't know if uh, Zoom works while you're driving because I tried again earlier and none of the audio would work, so I may lose you and I'll just dump it. Well, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, uh, driving outside of the fact that you aren't lit very much, you know, it's fine. Yeah, so. well, you know, on my tablet, on my mobile device, if I scroll to the left, it gives me a zoom while driving mode. Yeah, the speak button. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good because I was just saying, uh, Kevin should be careful if uh, he has streaming video while it's on the dashboard. If it's in plain view of like uh, a cop that comes up behind him. Or beside him, whether he'd be in a motorcycle or in a regular yeah. cruiser, uh, he can be. If, like I don't know if it's like in yeah. Pitts, Pennsylvania that he can be pulled over for that. So which which one, Brian? When you watched it last night, which one did you primarily watch? I mean, you could always which, go back of the debate of the the oh. town hall. Which town hall did I you watch? I watched all the reviews. Well, okay. I, yeah, but I'm asking Brian, which one which, did you oh, watch? Sorry. Which one did you watch? Which Brian are you referring to? Oh, Ludwig? Brian Ludwig. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I only saw bits and pieces of the Trump version, and I paid attention to the Trump to the Trump version because I wanted to see what the other side what what the other side was up to. Now, at last other not, side, I use that yeah, quotation. Yeah, but, but did you then primarily watch Biden? No, I didn't see Biden oh, at all. I okay. may, I may watch it later on. Because I have to admit, we watch, we watch Trump because you know there's nothing like a train wreck. You know, I mean, he's good yeah. for you can yell at your TV set. It's very interactive. Plus, yeah. I want to hear what his constituents have to say. You know, some well, of them you know, a the lot best. of them are out of work, and if they're not, you know, I know, I, I noticed this last night, and I mentioned it last night. But if you look at Trump over his um, left shoulder. 
was a yes, woman. Jaylee Morey. What? What was her name? Jaylee Morey. Yeah. Is that that bitch who kept nodding her head? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I heard go that. check her out. Huh? You got to go check her I out. I checked her out. What? What about her? Oh, she's hot. No, she's it's not. Okay. No, oh, she is. No, she is. You haven't seen it? Yes, I saw her. I saw an interview with her today. Oh, come on. No. All right, let's take a vote here. Uh, well, who yeah. was she? I know they're going to interview who, who was her name? What was her name again? Daily Mori. Yeah. Who yeah. was she? Just a head nodder? No, she's a Trump supporter. Yeah, a black a Trump supporter. supporter. That's all she's known for is being a black Trump supporter. Yeah, the black well, Trump supporter. The black I mean, Trump that's, supporter. That's that, the that and the other one that Kevin pointed out to me, which was a guy who shows up in the back of every one of his speeches. Yeah. Uh, same guy, at all his speeches. So. Uh, Trump's African American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we like our Negroes. Then there's uh, the other Myra Jolie. That's it. Huh? <clears throat> Myra Jolie. Oh, okay. okay. And you think she's hot? Oh, I think so, yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let me see. What? How's her name spelled? It's Myra, right? Myra? Yeah, and, I'm and, but J, trying to. J O L I E? Is it J O L I E? What the heck is wrong with me? I'm asking you, is it J O L I E? M A Y R A. Oh, wait a minute. No, oh, wait a minute. M A Y R A. Okay. Uh, there you go. And then is it J O L I? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, there she is. All right. Okay. And here she is. Uh, uh, let me oh, see here. Looks pretty hot uh, to me. Um, let me yeah, see here. I think she qualifies. Uh, Mm -hmm. This person named James Ho says when Nixon was running against Humphrey, Nixon refused a debate and they had competing events at the same time. So mm -hmm. apparently it's happened before, according mm -hmm. to this uh, person on YouTube in the YouTube chat. Well, here she is. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, the, the, right, she's not bad. There she is. Hold on a second, folks. I've got the screen up here so you can see it. Okay, there we go. There, uh, there she is. Uh, it's that woman right there. She was the one that was doing all the nodding. She's a former five-time beauty queen, and she garnered 2.5 percent uh, of the vote in her 2018 run as an independent in Florida's 27th congressional district. So, there she is. No. That's Myra Jolie. Yeah, I, I'm showing her picture right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody could see it. I, I don't find her that attractive. She's kind of... She looks like Rodman with a wig on. Huh? Like Rodman it. or, or Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Pippin with a wig on. Well, I like that. Any of you... Um, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, she picks up and Any of you are fans of R. Crumb? The cartoonist R. Crumb? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, he used to have a character called Angel Food McSpade. <laughs> I don't know what the sound is. What is that? They did a movie adaptation of his life, didn't they? Was John Candy in that or something? Or what? No, no, no. no. You're, you're thinking about Harvey P. Carr, I think. They did a movie about Harvey P. Carr. Although, wait a minute. They did a documentary about R. Crumb. Yeah. And at the end, he they, he dies. But he's not dead. But he said, I'll only let you do the documentary if you kill me at the end so I don't get annoyed by people. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, I had a sense of humor. I got to give him that. But uh, the, the nodding woman, she, she and, and there was another woman, there, another woman there who was also doing the same thing. And then there was a guy in the center behind Trump who wasn't doing anything, and when they went to a commercial and came back, he was gone and replaced by another woman who was nodding. Oh. <laughs> loyalty. He wants loyalty, right? Yeah, he wants loyalty. Like, sounds, like, uh, sounds like a junior grade level of psyops there or something. Yeah, something like that. But anyway. So. I heard that uh, 
some 370,000 votes in, in Pennsylvania were under question because people asked for double ballots. Like when they were in the primary, and they where, asked and for where did one. you where did you read that? I was online, and there was oh, another oh, one in, oh, in Pittsburgh. That, okay, that's very. That, that I, I'm glad it was online because if it wasn't online, I'd know it wasn't true. I I think it's legitimate. <laughs> oh, you uh, do? Why there's do you also the case of a uh, what? What, 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 is, what is the source on that? What? What is the source on that? What's historic? The, what source. is the source? S O U R C. Yes, I'm, I'm going to find it for you. There's also a uh, postal worker in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I heard who about that. Was uh, taking ballots and hoarding them. Mm -hmm. uh, he's taking all kinds of mail, including mm -hmm. people's votes. He was a QAnon supporter, from what I understand, if I'm not mistaken. So that. I've decided uh, Bree is QAnon. Uh, yeah. Alexa, <laughs> Alex is Antifa. Alex is Antifa. But, uh, so it's, yeah, there's, uh, there's uh, been reports of people getting the wrong ballots in the wrong, like, townships and boroughs well, and th shit. that's going to happen, but I, I'll tell you something. If you want to know, uh, we can start talking about improprieties just in normal voting Yeah, that happened. <laughs> Where, where votes don't get counted or don't get sent to the county seat uh, or, or transmitted to the county seat. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so to pick up on stuff like this simply because it's mail-in, uh, the, the mail-in has been shown to be far more um, uh, accurate. Yeah, remember uh, those hanging And efficient, chairs. yeah. Huh? Um, this is ProPublica. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of ProPublica? Yeah. Heard of them. Yeah, Here's but you know, it, it, is reporting like for instance, Trump is going. Oh, and in uh, I, I don't know some town or whatever, uh, they found they found uh, seven ballots for me in a garbage can. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, how, is many, how many? How many? A partisan how, source? I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, I, it's I, not don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yes, uh, Brian. That's okay. You don't have to show us. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I. I bring this up and I, I i believe what brie has to say here in this regard because I, I live in this area and uh but uh i i am in support of you know making uh, uh ballots easier for people making the election process easier for people and making it longer than one day but also i go so far as to say that hopefully sometime soon we can make it so that people can vote electronically so that it can be encrypted and so that this uh nonsense doesn't happen in this greater frequency as it has been well you know i mean um uh, Tr trump doesn't like it because uh, we're not going to ha necessarily have a uh, a winner on election night well so what you got the can't waits you know we didn't know who the election winner was several years ago uh, during the gore campaign right josh I also wanna, I also kamala wanna harris ballot, <laughs> uh, kamala harris said well, that, i just uh, asked josh a que i just asked josh a qu question and I, and I wanted to see if he'd come up with an answer on it. Do, do you do you know anything about all these these cases in the past where there've been problems with voting irregularities? I mean, we had it in Florida. It's going to happen. Isolated cases here and there. I mean, Trump was complaining about some ballots retweeting a bunch of stuff in the county right here that I work in, in Ohio, in Franklin County. It was a couple hundred ballots of this, that, or the other that were, and I'm like, I don't know that he should really complain about that too much because if they start looking into it, they're going to find out that if anybody should be mad, it should be Joe Biden because Franklin County, Ohio is the most heavily Democratic stronghold in the entire state. Uh, a Republican hasn't gotten elected in Franklin County in like a hundred years. I mean, he's not going to win Franklin County, Ohio, and but you know he doesn't think about that type of stuff. I mean, it's it's just a you know if I drop Good, my yeah, if I get out of the car and my ballot blows away mm -hmm. and goes down the street and ends up in the sewer and some guy walks by the next day and sees it, it'll be on the fucking Fox News by six p.m. that it was a something hinky going on there you know i mean it, uh, 
The election's on. It's happening. Yep. It's fair. We're having an election. We're not going to settle it with guns in the streets. What do you think about this current thing with Hunter Biden uh, and the fact that that whole story may be a Russian thing? Okay, yep. Russian generated. Columbus. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't hear really it, anything about it, but uh, just a little. Well, supposedly, it's, it's what's his name? I, I mean, it, I think it's pretty convenient. <laughs> just well, America's mayor, what's his name? Up. Rudy Giuliani, yeah. supposedly got this stuff from a Russian. Yep. And then he and Steve Bannon held on to it. And oh. supposedly it found wound up in on a hard drive on a on a, a laptop that Hunter Biden owned that he's put in for fixing or something. And then they got this because they found the, the, the laptop with the hard drive, and the hard drive had all this stuff on it. Okay. Wow. Well, they're saying that sounds really hinky. I might have to vote for Trump now. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Maybe I've changed now, my mind. Now, here's the other part about this. I mean, look, if you took that to criminal court, you might get held in contempt for wasting the judge's fucking time. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. Well, I mean, this I mean, is another Russian hack. Uh, they, they, you know, to begin with, nobody ha has seen that this is definitely from Hunter Biden's um, hard drive. In fact, there's a picture of him on the hard drive, and he's sleeping in bed, okay, oh, with a hash pipe hanging out no, of his I'm mouth. definitely voting for Trump. Yeah, you know. You're going to tell me that isn't Photoshop? Well, I mean, that's that's why I'm, I'm not voting by mail and I'm going on election day because yeah. something like this could come but, out. And but change forget it. about that. We know this whole thing is like uh, 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 Rudy Giuliani playing hickey with uh, with Hinky with the election and dealing with the Russians and getting them to join in on this whole thing. But the part about it that has gotten crazy is that Twitter and Facebook have refused to run tweets and Facebook posts yeah. by the New York Post or anybody regarding this particular situation. And now you got your gov your senator, uh, Ted Cruz in, in Texas, who wants to hold an investigation into Twitter on why they wouldn't allow this information to be dispersed. And Twitter is saying, we wouldn't let it be dispersed because we now have a policy that we will not allow anybody to post any materials that have been hacked. Well, why would the Republicans be upset about something that a private company like that does? Does freedom of the press not apply both ways? If I want to start uh, a rag that does nothing but propagate hey, uh, left-wing uh, extreme yeah. ideas or right-wing extreme ideas, do I not have that right? Yeah, but Josh, not, uh, I mean, Josh, these, these are these are these ways? are these are Republicans. Remember, in uh, mm -hmm. 2016, yes, they said Obama couldn't appoint a Supreme Court justice because it was in an election year, hmm. and now I mean, they've suddenly saying, changed their tune. Ways? I mean, if Twitter, Josh if Twitter was owned by the federal government. That I think would be a different case, but it's yeah. a private service that you choose to or not to install on your device. Mm -hmm. You choose or not to choose to read it. Um, or, I mean, you know what I'm saying, and on and on and on. So, do they not have some freedom there as well? That go, I mean, so well, I'll tell you what, I'm really happy investigate about investigate all you want, I guess. I'm happy that Twitter is not running this stuff, saying that we make it a policy now not to run hacked materials, right? And and that is one of the policies they set up because of what went on four years ago, and now right. the and Trump. If, and if you're on the opposite side of the fence there and you think that's abhorrent, then don't read Twitter. And, don't and install they, and, Twitter. And the, don't buy Twitter or whatever. And the no, Russians are up to their nasty... Don't go bankrupt and go away. They're up to their nasty hacking again. Uh, first we go to Brian, then we'll go to Bree. Yes, Brian. Yeah, I'll uh, dovetail kind of on what Josh is saying. Uh, I think what makes also a uh, crucial component, makes for a crucial component, and why I, I'm siding with Josh here is because there's a difference in between acknowledging Twitter and Facebook and platforms like them as just that platforms and not publishers they're not publishers they're platforms and because they're platforms from what i'm gathering because uh they can't be the arbiters of what can and cannot be 
divulged to the public and, you know, censored willy-nilly on a whim. Well, if they let hack materials through, they'd get everybody yelling at them. And if they don't, they, they're getting everybody to yell those, at uh, them. You know, the fact check sort sites. You see, when you share something on Facebook or something, you see below it, fact check. This 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 information is either false yeah. or you'll see this information is entirely false, partially true, or it's corroborated as true. Right. I have, Bree so, had his hand up. Bree? That's how you do it. Most people will just go with what they <clears throat> believe conforms to their beliefs. So, uh, you know, they're not necessarily true. There are some of us who do that, uh, but the majority don't. Two things. One is small. If, if the Trump campaign was watching Kamala Harris with Don Lemon on CNN mm -hmm. after the competing town halls, they have a clip they can use. Uh, she was talking about the Supreme Court and uh, she said it's illegitimate. They're rushing it. She said it's not it's not that we're in an election season. We're actually in the election. People are voting now. She says it doesn't uh, it, it's, it's already started and it will end on, you know, November 3rd or whatever the date is. Uh, so, but that's not true. It's not going to end on that day. It, uh, ballots could still be counted. Well, no, technically, after, technically the election. Said, wait technically, wait it ends. Te technically, it uh, ends. Now, on the other it. thing, if you caught it during Biden's town hall, he basically threatened. He said he's going to add justices to the Supreme no, Court. No, he didn't. If the Republicans go forward, he said how they play it now, and what he meant by that is if they call this off, and if they don't push this through. Uh, I, I will decide, uh, you know, we'll business as usual. But if they push this through, I'm going to add, you know, I'm going to add more justices to this. You know why they're pushing this thing through? Th this is their admission that they know that Trump isn't going to win the election. And this is also their fear and their feeling that they're going to lose the Senate as well. And they better do this now. Or they won't be able to get it done. And what and Bree, it's not a bad thing if Joe does that. That's perfectly legal. Yeah, it's perfectly legal. But everybody's yeah. pushing him on. Are you going to do it? Aren't you going to do it? He said, in a couple of in about a week, he's going to announce what he would do. I think his best answer is, you know, I I, I have to wait and see what the landscape is at the time. You know, this isn't a decision you make just because. Hey, you said How in your you campaign, think he'll have? huh? Three, what? Three or five. What? They'll have what? to add what? five in order to get the majority. He'll have to add five. I think uh, really to make things uh, equal out or not to equal them out, but I think you could do two. I think you could do two. And mm -hmm. there are swing votes there. I mean, John Roberts now is becoming more and more of a swing vote. And even uh, one of the ones he put in, he got in there, has not always voted the conservative line. Yes, uh, Brian. Two well, I figured that would get your attention. Uh, I, I say it should be four, and I say that should I say that because they should frame it in a different way. I, my my advice to him, not that he's listening, of course he's not, but uh, you know, f four more would bring it to thirteen. There are thirteen appellate courts, lower courts, and so you know, they could well, make the case. They could spin it in a way to say that it's I think reflective of the thirteen lower appellate courts that we have thirteen justices ideally picked from those lower. When we came up with this whole thing of justices and they have this appointment for a lifetime, uh, that. that was a long that, time. That issue. was a long but time ago. It's not now, okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that really what we should do is probably go for limited term of like 18 years, 18 years. Yeah, they, should have, what they should have the same term as a president. Eight years. No, no, more than no, 20. no. Here's what, they, here's what they proposed. Eight, 18 years. And that every four years, a president is allowed to appoint two. Okay. Okay. So that way, that way it balances itself out, you know, and nobody holds that thing forever. I mean, right now, if, she, like the if she gets in there she as young as she is, if she lives to be the same age as, you know, uh, Ruth, Bader Ginsburg. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, God, she's going to be there for the next 50 years. Oh, come on, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. nuts. You know, and I, what do you think, Josh? You're the big uh, uh, constitutionalist. Uh, I think it's fine the way it is. You think it's fine the way it is? Yeah, I mean, it, we're here. I mean, I mean, if you had people in these there. These are the same courts that took care of business many, many, many times before. I mean, we're in a bad way at the, at the 
moment because the ship is being steered by a fucking moron. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, we'll get through the storm here and then things will be okay. I mean, I, you can add 50. What, what, what it's not going to make any difference. I, I, I don't know that, you know, I just I don't buy into this. Who appointed them, and that's how they're going to go. I but Josh, you're, I, I Josh, you're perfectly it. fine. You're, you're perfectly fine with lifetime appointments, Josh. Is that what you're saying as well? Yes. Okay. I disagree. Uh, I mean, removing that. the lifetime appointment from. What is the advantage, though, Josh? What is the you know, advantage the, of a lifetime appointment, though? Well, I mean, there are a few. One is, I think it makes the justices immune from the political process outside of their nomination or their confirmation. I mean, they don't, they but, don't have but, yeah, but I mean, if you say, if you say only 18 years, okay, no. they're just, they're just as immune because they're not, they, they're not going to have to worry about being re-upped. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they're going to yeah. run for I, it. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there are, ways of not looking at it i mean you know justice Breyer has talked a lot about the fact that he thinks if you limit them to terms that you're going to end up with them being picked up basically just like former senators and former congressmen are to basically start an industry that lobbies to run the court yeah but you, words, but you have people you have people who have back to argue cases and yeah, but you, you, you've had you've I mean, had cheap you've had justices on the Supreme Court who've retired. Kennedy retired, for instance. You know, right, it happens. It I mean, I mean, it, 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 I'm I'm just saying that I see no disadvantage to just saying 18 years. That's it. You know, and in the meantime, you're free to make any decision you want without fear of being thrown off the court. You know, it's not like we're going to renew you every four years, or the or the president can say, okay, you're no longer on the Supreme Court. No, it's a solid 15, 18 years, and and I don't think there's any pressure on you at that point, you know. I mean, I. I mean, look. I guess I just don't. I just disagree. I mean, like I said, I I think I would happen to agree with Breyer that if you start cycling justices in and out, you're just going to create okay. a cottage industry that tries to lobby and control the court with money the same way that they've worked themselves into the legislature. Let me branch. throw this one at you, okay? Um, a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. When when was the first time they appointed people to the Supreme Court? Well, the 1790s. Okay, what was the life expectancy at that time? <laughs> I mean, I seem to remember it being around 60, 60. I think it was less than that. I think it was almost in the high 40s. That's the average person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is when you say a lifetime appointment today, it's far longer than it was when this thing yeah. was first that, thought that up. That. Well, it depends, but we also don't appoint people nearly as young as we used to. I mean, people, you know, we've had chief justices during that period that were like 32, 33, 34 well, years old. That would be unheard of now. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Justice Roberts was in his mid-50s. Were they he as was. political in, so, in in appointing them in those days as they are today? Well, I don't think it was as political now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I just think we have to protect the democracy, and I don't think we're protecting it by allowing this kind of thing that's going on right now to happen. You know, I guess I just, I mean, I, I wouldn't agree. I mean, yeah. just, I, I yeah. see that more as a, an abdication of the people mm -hmm. for their power. I mean, you act like once the court is done, it's done. The people can overrule the court. They just never do. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if the court says tomorrow, Roe v. Wade is, is, the doomsday scenario comes true. And all I hear is, yeah, but six and ten Americans don't agree with that and blah, blah, blah. And all that might be true. But the second part of that equation is, but how much do they care? Six and ten or seven and ten might think that abortion should be legal, mm -hmm. but how much do they care about it? Because the court could say that tomorrow. I mm -hmm. mean, they could just up and just say, you know what? It is overturned. It's done. It's thrown out. It's fucking finished. I mean, we're going to write it so that every single nightmare 
came true for, for liberals, et cetera, et cetera. And the next day, the people could say, you know what? We're getting us some fucking lawmakers in there, and we're undoing this. And yeah. if the people won't do it, that's the people's problem. It is not the problem mm-hmm. or the fault of those nine justices. It is uh, not it- their fault that they could not satisfy the $360 million because the overwhelming majority of them were too lazy yep. or too stupid to elect lawmakers mm-hmm. that would represent their desires and their intentions. Jeff hasn't said anything tonight. You want to say anything, Jeff? I'm always very curious. If you use your 18 years exit strategy, Mm -hmm. uh, how many people that are already on the court that would be here 18 years already and you're going to have to throw them out right away? Probably, probably. Oh, yeah. you know. But I, I don't know how many of them have been there that long. Just now. about everybody. I'm, I'm thinking they'd be grandfathered, if anything, as a as a conciliatory. Okay, member. grandfather them in and then start the 18 for yeah, any no. new appointees. That would be Balance one of way power of power and all that nonsense. Kevin, yeah, how how are you doing, Kevin? Kevin's long. still driving oh. there. We see him. He kind of looks hear me? looks like ZZ Top going down the highway. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. I'm a Gilroy now. Garlic. I can smell the garlic. Yeah, it smells like garlic. I just crushed a bunch of it. Every time you go through Gilroy, you smell garlic still, right? It's more like onions right now, I think. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I used to love Kevin, it when you I have go- a question. Yeah. I have a question for Kevin, also for Mr. Neri. Anybody who lives in California, is the exodus from California as bad as I'm hearing it on uh, various YouTube channels from, like, more right wing, right of center uh, pundits and whatnot. I hear from the media, but I don't see it yet. Oh, really? My neighbor just, uh, my neighbor just moved from uh, Hollister to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, just uh, said, Screw it. Well, they, they're Texas. exiting. They're exiting New York City at the yeah. present time. Yeah. That too. Because, but, and, because, and Trump brought uh, that up, going, "Oh, things are so bad in New York." No, that's not the reason they're exiting. <laughs> you know. Um, yes. I think a lot of these people really are buying moment. three houses down there yeah. for the price that they had here. Yeah. Bree. Something that uh, I read today was interesting. There's a bakery in uh, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and they yeah. sell cookies for Trump, and they sell cookies for Biden. And they limit the numbers so that you know somebody can't come in. And they say they successfully predicted the presidential uh, race in Pennsylvania since you know they've been cooking since they've been baking cookies right now trump is out selling biden cookies three to one well that certainly means now that of course uh, biden hasn't got a chance <laughs> oh fuck yeah. i'm biden vote for trump now yeah because i don't want to be on the losing side of this yeah and who you think eats more cookies trump or biden and that fat ass all these other people are yeah. eating cookies. good point but, you know, I'm of the camp where I'll believe Biden wins when I see it on election night or like in the next. Uh, right. Uh, I'm, I'm right. sorry. I just have to see it to believe it. I'm from what's that, what's that expression I'm from Missouri, the show me state. You got to show me. Yeah. So anyway. Take a quick comment about the uh, mail. If you go back to the mailboxes, but they've had a bunch of mailboxes out here in, in California that have been put up that were not legal. And they're all Republican. Yeah. Mailbox. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. 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 And they won't take them down. They won't take All them down. Illegal. How many votes have they already trashed? Anyway, hey, listen, I'm playing the theme. I'm playing. I'm playing the theme. Uh, okay, I can't hear it, so go ahead. Yeah, tr- I, I want me to hum it for you. Uh, 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 thank, you Ch- thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. He's a good hover. And Brian Neary, thank you as well. The little darling isn't there tonight, huh? No, it's Friday night. She's up. She's playing games. Oh, she, she oh. Playing? oh, okay. She's ready for me to play with her. Okay. You, good yeah, dad. Do good dad that you are. Josh, thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Uh, Brian, always nice having you here. Brian Ludwig. Uh, Bree from Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> 
Nice. Got James, buddy. Really nice. And, uh, of course, uh, Tony, great to see you. And, Jeff, you've been quiet tonight, but we think the world of you, and we love having you here just to see your face there and that great beard. And the other great beard belonging to Kevin, who's driving down the road, who is either ZZ Top or David Letterman, one or the other. Uh, everybody, uh, why don't you uh, kind of, you know, give it a, a big uh, a big wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the, um, oh, I forgot to wave. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that's it for tonight. That's our, that's our citizen panel. Uh, there'll be another one getting together right after we're through here with Jack Bishop in the intersection. He'll be using Skype and the uh, number you call is GabNet Live on Skype. GabNet Live. In the meantime, uh, I got to go. Time to, I'm running over time now. I got to go. Uh, we'll see you again on Tuesday night, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Please be safe out there and do yourself a favor and your fellow person a favor and wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Good night.